What category is this molecule in? Take your time and give it some thought. Well, it is completely conjugated because again, this atom at the right is an sp2. It has a lone pair and it's connected to an sp2. So using the exception that we've learned about in these videos, this is also an sp2 hybridized atom. All the atoms are sp2, so we're completely conjugated. We have some pi bonds, and each of those contributes two pi electrons. Now, this oxygen is sp2 hybridized, so we know that it has a p orbital. So what's it going to do with its p orbital? Well, it's going to put a lone pair in the p orbital. Uh, we don't know which one, but let's say this one on the top. So I'm going to circle these to show that these are also in a p orbital. Maybe I'll put the letter p here to again remind yourself that this is a lone pair that's in the p orbital. But how about this lone pair? Can this also be in a p orbital? The answer is no. Why can't this be in a p orbital? Well, remember from the work that we did earlier, how many p orbitals does an sp2 hybridized atom have? Remember that every sp2 hybridized atom only has one p orbital left. The other three orbitals are sp2 orbitals. So this cannot be in a p orbital because this atom has already used up its p orbital. So what type of orbital are these in? These are in an sp2 orbital. This lone pair here must be in an sp2 orbital. So I'm not going to circle these because they're not in a p orbital. They must be in one of the three sp2 orbitals. So do these electrons count as pi electrons? No, because remember the definition that we learned of pi electrons. Pi electrons are the electrons in side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. Remember that pi is the Greek letter for p. You can only have pi electrons when you're in a p orbital. This is not a p orbital, so these are not pi electrons. These are pi electrons because they are in a p orbital that can have side-to-side -side overlap with the p orbitals over here. So only one of these lone pairs counts as pi electrons. We could use whichever we wanted, but if we count these as pi electrons, these don't count. So how many pi electrons do we have total? One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, these don't count. This lone pair doesn't count. So yes, this is aromatic, because we have the six pi electrons. All right, so now we've finally gotten to the point where we're doing some of the hard questions that give a lot of students trouble on homework and on exams. Most students tend to get a question like this wrong, and you can see now what the reason is. People tend to get this wrong because they don't know how to tell which lone pairs count as pi electrons. So all the work that we've done so far has gotten us to this point where now we can finally figure out which of the lone pairs count as pi electrons. So we've just seen that um, you can only have one lone pair count as pi electrons, because once you've used your p orbital for that, you don't have another p orbital left over uh, for the other lone pair. Uh, th there's actually um, uh, one other reason why you can't have more than one pair of pi electrons on one atom. Remember that the pi electrons have to uh, be coming from side to side overlap of p orbitals at every atom in the ring. Even if this lone pair was in another p orbital, it couldn't um, be having a side to side overlap with the other p orbitals everywhere else. Um, if this p orbital has a side to side overlap with the other p orbitals, this one can't because they'd be perpendicular to each other. Uh, I wanted to mention that just uh, for completeness, uh, but don't worry about it if you didn't follow what I just said. Um, for most problems, it's not, it's not important to worry about that. So again, if you didn't follow what I just said, don't worry about that for the time being. Uh, again, the key point here, or a good way to think about this, um, is again, um, we can only have one lone pair on the atom that counts as pi electrons. And one way to think about that is because an sp2 atom only has one p orbital. Okay, uh, so again, this was aromatic with the six pi electrons. Is this molecule aromatic? anti-aromatic or non-aromatic. Remember to pause the video and give this problem a shot before you proceed to see the answer.
Let's count the pi electrons. There's two pi electrons in each pi bond. This nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. Uh, we would know that using either the rule or the exception for hybridization. So this nitrogen is connected to two atoms and a lone pair. So it should have three hybridized orbitals, which makes it sp2 hybridized. And in addition, since it has a lone pair and it's connected to an sp2 atom, we would uh, expect also according to that, according to the exception for hybridization, that again, this would be sp2 hybridized. Uh, therefore, this nitrogen has one p orbital. What is the nitrogen doing with its one p orbital? Well, we know the nitrogen must be using its p orbital for its pi bond. So I'll label this electron with a p to indicate that the nitrogen must be using its 1p orbital for this electron in its pi bond. Therefore, this lone pair cannot be in a p orbital. This lone pair must be in one of the nitrogen's three sp2 orbitals. The nitrogen must be using an sp2 orbital for this lone pair because it's already used up its 1p orbital for the pi bond. Therefore, this uh, lone pair does not count as pi electrons. Remember that the pi electrons are only the electrons in the overlapping, side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. Since this is not in a p orbital, it can't be pi electrons. I'll cross that lone pair out to remind ourselves that those are not pi electrons. So how many pi electrons are there total? One, two, three, four, five, six pi electrons, which means that the molecule is aromatic. This example is uh, one of the examples that students are most likely to get wrong. And you can see what the basic problem that a lot of students have is, um, students have a hard time telling which lone pairs count as pi electrons and which lone pairs do not count as pi electrons. Uh, well, using the skills that we worked on, now hopefully you're feeling more confident about deciding which of the lone pairs count as pi electrons. Only lone pairs that are in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals can count as pi electrons. Um, so if the atom has already used up its p orbital for um, a pi bond, then the lone pair cannot count as pi electrons. And in a previous example, we also saw that if an atom has already used its p orbital for one lone pair, then if there's another lone pair on that same atom, that could not be in a p orbital, so that could not count as pi electrons. This example is interesting because it shows, uh, because we've seen in previous examples uh, a case of an atom that had one lone pair that counted as pi electrons and one lone pair that does not count as pi electrons. But this is a case where the nitrogen only has one lone pair. But even though the nitrogen only has one lone pair, that lone pair still does not count as pi electrons because the nitrogen has already used its p orbital for the pi bond. As I said, this is one of the problems that students are most likely to miss on exams, so it would be a special good idea to um, keep this problem in your notes and practice it.